Well, thank you everybody for coming back for another episode of CEO for Life, where what we do is we try to bring you some of the best thinkers, thought leaders, practitioners that I can possibly get my hands on to talk and share, a, one, a little bit about their story for context, and then two, is how they go about living that CEO life. And again, like you know, we always talk about is there's no difference between the workplace and the life place. They are aligned, and the better they are in alignment, the more success you're going to have, the happier you're going to be, and when you come to the end of the road, you're going to have less regret. So... I want to introduce you to a friend of mine that um, a roundabout way, um, we became friends via LinkedIn and through this other project that's going on. But I want to introduce you to Larry Kilstatis, who goes by LK. So Larry, thanks for being here today, man. I appreciate it, Robert. Glad to be here. Awesome. Well, I could go on and on about this guy's resume, but I want you to look him up on LinkedIn. And you see his information here, but look him up on LinkedIn. His list of, I guess... Uh, I don't know, ribbons, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> the guy, the guy, the guy's, the guy's a stud period. So uh, in, in the work world and so many other ways. And, and uh, so I'm just super excited about the wisdom he's going to share with us today. So um, let's just jump in. So um, LK, maybe give us a little context about your story and, you know, I mean, how we got to today. Sure. So the story is, is really informed by a childhood of, uh, I was the kid that I just didn't want to get all the answers right. I wanted to be the first one done. Right. <laughs> and I don't know if you remember the Seinfeld episode where George Costanza talks about, well, if I just do the opposite of what I think I should do. Yeah. That, right. I, yes. So yes. This is a little, this yeah. is a little sad. So here's your single tear for the day. <laughs> I literally looked at my dad's life and said, I will do the opposite of what he did. Okay. And you know, it's worked out really well. Um, but leadership has always been my major passion. Mm -hmm. Whatever, whatever in sports, in business, in the military, I love the study of leadership. I love the study of leaders. I'm amazingly passionate about leadership. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, so as you were going through that process, where did 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 self awareness come to you? And because you know, one of the things that's very important about leaders is they do have a level of self awareness. And so was that naturally for you or was that something that had to be beat into you? I have a friend that I, I have a friend that says there's two types of dogs and please, this is not, I mean, I'm not, I'm not condoning anything with dogs. You need to get out of here. Right, exactly. Well, and he says there's two types of dogs and this is a Southern thing is there's the dogs you got to beat and then there's the dogs you got to give treats to, right? And so that's how we learn, right? So we're either having to take the lumps or, you know, we actually get rewards. So how did self-awareness come to you to know that leadership was your thing? I think Salvation Army Christmases make you really aware that there's a better life if you work hard. Mm -hmm. And so I was very deliberate about school and about sports and about uh, uh, candidly being a leader. I wanted to go to Boys State. I wanted mm -hmm. to be the captain of the sports team. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, I pursued it. Wow. So, I mean, it actually was a vision for your life. And then you set the mission and goals in place in order to get you there then. Correct. Basically. So that's a, that's, you know, that is the roadmap that just about most successful thinking goes that route. And um, I know you have a huge quality background and, um, and so, you know, measurement, obviously, um, you know, my degrees as an engineer, you have a background as, as well, you know, what gets measured gets done kind of thing. Um, you know, did you, did you really, uh, I guess the best way for me to ask, is, did you keep score a lot? Oh my God. So I love this. And this is where <laughs> I love a lot of the Covey work around four disciplines of execution, not 40 X. Mm -hmm. And so one of my mantras and literally the first question I ask every single CEO, a coach, uh -huh. are you winning? Mm. And you can take that in any context, life, uh -huh. person, right. leadership, business, because the next part of that question is whether they say win or either yes or no, what is the empirical evidence of that answer? Yeah. So a lot of people say, oh, I'm winning. Well, how do you know? Oh, I just feel good. It's just that <laughs> life is good. Like, how do you know? Mm. Give me the empirical evidence. I love that. I love I, I loved that thought process of how do you really know? Because if you aren't measuring, you really don't know. Um, you know, I, and the way I explain it to, you know, my kids, just in a simple terms, it's like, you know, that, you know, that little tick mark we measure on the side of the door to see how tall you are. You know, I mean, that's, that's, that's the most simplistic way for me to explain is, 
everything in your life, you should be you should be taking some measurements or have some measurements to understand if you're moving things forward. So yeah, I have a, a quick little story on that. There's a um, so my background with sports, my my sport that I excelled at was wrestling, right? And I'm in the wrestling room in college, and um, you know everybody at Division One is a former state champion, and they ruled the roost wherever they were. And now all of a sudden you're with a whole bunch of other people who are just as fast, just as strong, know all the yeah. moves, all that. So now it gets into who's got the, you know, the, the grit, right? Mm -hmm. And um, one of the assistant coaches at our school was world, a world champion and a silver medalist in the Olympics. Oh my and God. I was watching him practice and he was sort of getting beat by this other kid on the wrestling team. And, mm -hmm. I, and by the way, this kid was below me in the depth chart at my weight class. So Butch was in our, was wrestled my weight class. So he okay. became a real mentor to me. And, and I'm, I'm a freshman. I don't, I don't know much about much at that point. <laughs> and I go to Coach Perry to coach. And I said, what's, what, what is this kid like really that good? Am I in trouble here? Hey. And, and he goes, Larry, Butch practices things he's bad at in practice. So he knows he's got an issue with a move this kid's good at. Mm -hmm. and he's letting the kid do it. So oh. He's trying to figure out how to defend it. Yeah. And I was like, okay. So that's a championship mindset. I'm going to work on the things I'm not good at in practice. But when it comes mm -hmm. to the match, so when it comes to the real world, when I right. actually have to keep score, real scorekeeping, right. I'm going to my go-to moves, but that made me a little bit better. That's awesome. So, you know, because I subscribe to this, this thought process of, um, you know, strengths over weaknesses, right? You know, understanding my weaknesses working on them, but not really focusing on them, but really focusing more on my strengths and doubling down on those. And so maybe walk me through your, your thought process on that is, you know, if you have a client, you know, and they know certain weaknesses and those kind of things, how do you balance, how should a person balance their time on their strengths versus their weaknesses? So this is a really good um, transition from, from what we just talked about, because there's the, you working on your strengths, and you leveraging your strengths, which I actually think you should do. I think you coach the strengths, right? Right. When you know you have weaknesses in the world, so you're a leader in a business, and, and my, one of my CEO groups, we just talked about this in our last meeting this week. You have to find people that have the talent that you don't have. Because mm -hmm. you're not, get, you, you can only, if you're weak at it, you might get yourself to a B level, but you'll never be an A. Yep. Now, that said, you're A and all this other stuff, right? But <laughs> sure. you get the people who are A's in the things you're not an A in. And no yeah. one's an A in everything. Mm -hmm. So go find the A players and, and let them run that piece. Let it go. I love that lesson. That's just such a strong lesson. I think so many people spend their time trying to work on the things that are weak and then they end up wasting time on really being able to uh, excel at the things their strengths are or what they're what they're deep in in that depth awesome so okay so you go to so you have this time where you you know you want to be a leader and you're moving through life and through the education process into the work well the, through the military and into the work world and so you know you're now in a place in a role where leadership is so important i think it's more important now than ever um and so talk a little bit about some of the things that you're seeing because you have the ability to look across a lot of leaders. Yep. And so maybe you can share some of the things that you're seeing working out in the leadership world that may be obstacles that are coming and challenges as well as where you think some of the real strengths are and some of the changes are in leadership. So I think the number one transition that has been made and we're, we're over the threshold, it was coming, it was coming, it was coming and we walked over the threshold, COVID, you know, supercharged it is the idea of being the empathetic leader. So it's okay to be able to give someone radical candor with empathy. Mm -hmm. So there's like the big J, the little J, you know, the big jerk, the little jerk. Yes. You, you can avoid being the big J, right? <laughs> right, right. But some, sometimes you, know, you have to be a little bit of a little J to, to share reality with somebody. Right. So there's, there's, there's this, phrase I use all the time is, you know, great leaders accept reality as it is. They don't pretend what reality isn't. And they talk to people like adults with candor in an empathetic way. Mm -hmm. The idea is I'm giving you this feedback to improve you. 
Mm. Now, if you're in career jeopardy at this company, that's a different conversation. Sure it is. This is a conversation about how you become your best self, right. where your blind spots are, and, and for me to help you. And I, and I, I look at leadership, and I, and I eloquently call it four buckets of time. So I'm okay. big on time. Time is the only finite resource we have. There so it I, is. I, I, that's, my, that's my reminder every day. Time is the most it's, valuable it's the only thing. thing. It's the only thing. Right. No matter how rich you are, poor you are, great you yep. are, bad you are, time Same is thing. finite. So here's the, here's the, I wish I had a bit, I, I'm trying to think of a sexy, I'm writing a book about this. I want to make it sexier, but I haven't come up with any, so if you think of something clever, let me know, but I got four buckets of time. I mean, mm-hmm. Covey already took the quadrant, so I can't use that. <laughs> so there's the day job, right? Mm-hmm. There's strategic relationships. Mm-hmm. There's developing people and there's strategic thinking. If you really break down everything a leader does, they all fit in one of those. Mm-hmm. Day jobs, strategic relationships, developing people, strategic thinking. Mm-hmm. Well, of course, where do you think a leader should spend most of their time? Yeah, I, I mean, uh, people. Yeah, now I'm talking about now, if I'm going to talk about there's a finite. Okay, okay, sorry. Here. So no, no, you're right. But it's a nuance. If mm-hmm. I'm the CEO, I shouldn't have to be developing my leadership team in the true sense of developing. Mm-hmm. I said developing strategic relationships with my C-suite. Mm-hmm. Now I may tweak some behaviors here or there, but mm-hmm. by the time they get to that level, right. they, should, they should have a lot of development already done. And I probably am not the person to develop them on other things they need to do. Mm-hmm. We're probably talking mm-hmm. about specific functional things. Right. I absolutely should not spend a minute if I don't have to in the day job. I sure. get there's day job stuff that only the CEO can do, but you should squash that down to a minimum. I tell people all the time, you're spending as a CEO more than 10% of the day job. You can't scale. Wow. It should be strategic relationships, number one, and strategic thinking, number two, developing mm-hmm. people, number three, and then day job, four. Now, let's talk about next layer down. So level two, right? Level one is the CEO. Level two is the C-suite. Yeah. That they should spend time developing people. Okay. They should. Here's the quote I used: "Growing their leaders." Yeah. Who mm-hmm. is your? Stunt Ooh, double? that's great. Stunt if you don't double. have a stunt double, <laughs> you're in trouble. Yeah, I love that. So who is your stunt double? And you better be developing that person. And again, strategic relationships super important. Strategic thinking very important. Now they're gonna have a little bit more day job, but it should not be more than 25, 30 percent of their time. Mm-hmm. If it is, something's wrong. Now, mm-hmm. look, now level three. So now we're in the VP, you know, level person. They ought to be spending a lot of time in developing people. Okay. A lot of time strategic relationships, some mm-hmm. strategic thinking, probably not tons. And their day job is probably 50%. Sure. There's right? a plan being executed and that's what they're right. doing. And now you can yeah. kind of do the math yourself as you go down levels, right? Mm-hmm. It's the same shift. The lower level you go down, the more day job you have. And the higher level you go up, the less day job you have. And I'm always amazed when I do this exercise with my CEOs, how some of these CEOs are so proud of their time in the day job. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm the best one at that. I'm right. the best coder right. in the company. I'm the best right, developer right, right. in the company. I'm the best engineer in the company. Oh, great. Good for you. Here's a, here's a ribbon. Now go get out of that. <laughs> go find someone else to get that ribbon to. Yeah, right, right. You know, that, you know, the thought process in that is, you know, because it, it cause it's comfortable, right? Because yeah. most, most CEOs, you know, have, have just done that day job for so long, you know, they were at that level where it was a hundred percent of what they did, then 80%, then 50%. And then, you know, and then once they start getting where it gets squashed a little bit more, I think they begin to derive their value is less, right? There's this, this psychological thing that happens that, oh my gosh, not because I'm not doing that, I'm, I'm less valuable. No, 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 no. The reason you're now in that role is because, you know, you are the one, like you said, to be able to look, look further beyond the horizon, build the strategic relationships, gather the people together, be able to steer the ship before the icebergs there, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I have a couple, I have a little phrases for everything, right? Yeah. Uh, so the way I look at it is, a strategic CEO solves the problem that's coming. Mm-hmm. A day job CEO solves the problem that's here today. Mm-hmm. But which one's more valuable? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I'm going to have my COO solve the problem for today. <clears throat> sure. 
I should be solving the problem for tomorrow. I love it. Man, I love that. And so, you know, so I'm going to try and in, 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 in bridge this together with the workplace and the life place, right? <clears throat> because I just truly believe this. If we, if we had everything we've just talked about and we implemented it in our non nine to five, nine right. to seven job, how different would our life be, right? How different would your life be if you thought exactly the way you just described? Yeah, and, this applies to your real world. Yeah. No, I mean, you know, whether it's your family, whether it's being a parent, you know, whether, you know, if you're involved in a nonprofit or, you know, you're just out serving in the community, if you use these same concepts, you're going to win for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you want to make the, the quick, you know, commentary on that, I mean, you know, the day jobs, all the stuff, the errands, the things you have to do to take care of your household, mm -hmm. things to take mm -hmm. care of just the maintenance of life, right? Right. Developing people. Well, if you have kids, you're developing people. Mm -hmm. If you have friendships, you're yep. developing people. And sure. That's part of being a, a good human, right? Yeah. Just yeah. being a kind human. Mm -hmm. And then if you think about strategic thinking, I mean, it's important to sit down with whoever is important in your life and talk about where do we want to be. Yeah. And then thinking about the, the, the steps that take you there and reassessing them, the scoreboard. Are we winning mm -hmm. as, a, as a couple? Are we winning as a family? Mm -hmm. Am I winning as a human? What's that look like? And where are my relationships? You know, you don't really have to call them strategic. You can. I mean, but the deep relationships, you, you know this adage that it's more important to have several deep relationships than a whole bunch of shallow relationships. Of course. And I, oh man, you, you knew exactly where I was going with this one. <laughs> And, uh, you know, it, go, it goes back to Roan, right, where, you know, he talks about you're the average of the five people or three people, right, you spend the most time with. Yep. And, and so, and we're talking about empathy at the same time. And I spend, you know, I spend time talking with my clients as well as, you know, who are the people that you're spending your most time with? And, you know, and, and, and how do you think that really is feeding your brain, then your heart, and then your behavior? And, um, and so, talk to me a little bit about how can how how can you go about empathetically letting people know that they're that they may not need to be the number one person in your life because you're not getting where you need to go because of that well, workplace and life place this is yeah i know i know i know i know this is a a, a really tough candor conversation right this is one of those crucial conversations a fierce conversation i'll be one to turn it it's asking in my, the way I have handled this in the past, it's asking the other person to step up with you mm -hmm. and, and, and helping them see the vision of where you're going in your life. Uh, that's totally a different way of thinking about it. And would, you come, and would you like to come with me? If you want to come with me, here's the things that we should do together and I will help you get there. And it's interesting. I look at you know, the spectrum of your life and you could probably do the same thing. And I look at in my, from high school, I probably only have two or three people I still really mm -hmm. talk to. Naval kind of is a little different because of who goes there. So there's a lot more relationships there that have stood the test of time because they've grown as I've right. grown. Right, right. In the world of work, the thing I'm singularly most proud of, if you said, Larry, right now, tell me what you're most proud of in your whole career is the fact I look back at my career and I can point out seven people who have reported to me in the past who are now CEOs or presidents of companies. Mm -hmm. That's cool. That is super cool. You're right. That's significance. You know, that's, there's that book success over significance or success to significance. Right. And, um, and I'm beginning to see more and more people latch on to that in their life especially like you said because we've tripped over this covid thing into this into this new thinking you know where i'm i'm hearing more of my friends talk about van life and about yeah. you know, oh, i think that's and, insane by the way but okay <laughs> i know you know and and you know just people reevaluating everything i mean like across the board and it's just and it all you know they're like maybe money isn't really everything and you know really you know whose life have i impacted and you know um and really taking you know taking account in the column and counting you know man what am i really doing and um, and I love your thought process about that. Is that you know maybe not everyone needs to be cut out or limited in your life. Maybe it is a question of come along with me. 
I have to tell you a quick story there because you, you mentioned van life. So I have a friend who, from my former consulting world who was a managing partner at a big consulting firm, PwC, and she quit her job and her and her wife and their two so kids. Great. That's they, so great. They customized a school bus, painted it pink, <laughs> and they named it Someday. Oh, my god! Because they, were they always wanted Someday to do this thing where they huh? traveled the country yeah. with their little kids in a bus and yeah. taught them about the world. And COVID made someday happen. So they're running around the country. If you see a pink school bus named someday, it's That's just fantastic. And it's and she's the best. And they That's... are they're living their best life, but I couldn't do that. They yeah, I know. <laughs> kids in a bus traveling the country. Yeah, no, you're right. It does take it does take a you know a kind of a you know, you have to you have to be ready to do that kind of stuff. But you're right. I mean, you know, leaving a big job like with you know with price and then you know to 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 walk away to to someday, that's awesome. You know, I mean, I, I love that for them. You know, that that I have, I have joy really feeling that for them. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. You know, and that, and that I, sidebar. My wife's goal is to for us to live on a catamaran in the Caribbean. That's that's uh, her. her <clears throat> that that's gonna happen. That's gonna. We need to have a sidebar about that because you know they have those as VRBOs, right? I know they do. Uh, I know. So you can buy one now, rent it out when you're ready. It's yours. That's right. Um, so anyway, sidebar. Um, <laughs> one of the, uh, the one of the you know we're we're running into 40, 40, 45 minutes here, so I don't want to take too much of your time. And I just really appreciate everything. Really do okay. Um, you know, we were talking about that success to significance move, and you know, and so you know, I I had a real estate company a year and a half ago. I exited out of that, you know, to to, to jump into you know my my new my my someday again and um and so pivot is a, is something you hear a lot right now too when people are pivoting because of the uh, you know the realization of tripping over covid um so what advice would you have for for people that are looking to pivot or may have even been pushed into a pivot so you know what what is the start of a pivot process in your mind so this I, i'm a bit of a you know engineering background a bit of a realist um, <laughs> I love that you should have a vision. Okay. I love that people should have a vision and something they're super passionate about. How do you monetize it? What does the monetization of that look like where you can do something, you know, and you kind of mentioned it is like, you can do something where you don't feel like you're working because you're so happy doing it. Mm -hmm. Then does your lifestyle fit that number of the monetization? Very real. Mm -hmm. Very real. And it's okay, by the way, if your commentary is, my lifestyle doesn't fit this monetization, but I'm aware and I realize I'll probably be eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for a year. Right. It's worth it to get there. And I can tell you story after story. So I have, I've coached 63 CEOs, right? Mm -hmm. I can tell you story over story of some of them who literally, they bet, they burn the ship. <laughs> They bet everything. That's it. Put their 401k yeah. in, yep. sold the house. Yep. We're going to make this happen. And a lot of those people don't make it. Yes, I understand. I'll tell you what, the ones that do, talk about some actualizations. Right. It's the best thing you can ever do. Right. No, it is, um, you know, and I spend a lot of time talking about risk with my clients too, but I always throw in calculated risk. Right. Sure. There's risk and then there's calculated risk. And, you know, they're the two very different things. Um, and a lot of people just jump without actually going through the the mental exercise of calculating um, some of hey, those Robert, outcomes. Hey, Robert, can I add one more thing? Yeah, man, absolutely. Focus. Mm. So I ran, and this, this just triggered a story. So Jamie, my wife, and I were out at, were out at a local restaurant on Canton Street in Roswell, which we love. It's the coolest place ever. You know, so much so we have a food in wall one place because we probably have to get money there. Um, of course you, of course you do, okay. So we run into this guy and he we know him from someone, I can't really place it. But he comes up to me and goes, Hey, like I was hearing from somebody else that you coach CEOs and I'm developing some companies. I said and mm -hmm. I thought, okay, so here we um, go. Red flag company. Nice. Here we go. <laughs> so he starts to tell me about these like seven or eight companies he's trying to do. Yeah. Or he's doing. Yeah. And I finally looked at him and said, okay, that's great. Which one is paying your rent right now or your mortgage? Mm -hmm. Well, here's the here's the punchline. Oh, none of them. I'm a bartender. Mm -hmm. 
But boy, you got some great ideas. You know, it's it's shameful that I laugh because, um, and it's and it's because, you know, it's it's also because I live that experience, right? So I left corporate America in 2006 because I was like, you know, what I'm going to be an entrepreneur. You know, I mean, I'm I'm going to, you know you know, and this is because a little bit of my ego, right? Because I was in human resources at the time. And so, of course, all the ops people look at HR like back office, even though this is a <laughs> fortune, even though it's a fortune 150 company, you know, I'm negotiating labor relation contracts, you know, billion dollar construction contracts, you know, I'm, I'm testifying in front of the national labor relations board, you know, I'm bringing value, right? right. And, you know, but, but I'm still HR. So anyway, um, so I was like, well, I'm going to show them, I'm going to go out and, you know, I'm going to go into commercial real estate and I'm going to start my own business and all this other stuff. So 2007 and eight happened and I'm going broke, dead broke. Right. And, and I thought I did all the calculations and everything else, but I never saw 2008 coming, right. Yeah. Seven and eight. And, um, you know, but, and, you know, that really humbled me and, uh, it broke my ego actually forever. And, um, and, you know, through that process, you know, I was spiritually renewed and, and, and went in, into a direction and had some successful businesses. But that's why I was laughing is because, you know, it's, it's easy to have a lot of ideas. Um, it's easy to create the logo like I was, we were talking about before. It's easy to get the business card. It's easy to, do, to you know, hey, I'm the CEO on LinkedIn, right? And, uh, <laughs> you know, but, but uh, when, it, when it comes to execution and persistence and being willing to eat the peanut butter and jelly and the ramen and look your wife in the face and say, I'm going to make this work, you know, those are, those are real, real, that's, that's real life. It really is. And, I, and I'll give you the backstory on that one. And I did agree to meet with him. And we had breakfast together. Mm -hmm. and the good news is I actually think he has one really actually great idea. Yeah. I convinced him to just go all in on that one and forget all these other side things. I mean, the side things were things he just liked doing. Right. But there's no money in them. Mm. That's great if you're, uh, you know, on an island <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I love that, man. I got to tell you, you know, this has been the best 45 minutes of, uh, of my week, to be honest. Not, oh, anything, not, against, not, not, not anything against the other guests and stuff, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, I really have enjoyed talking to you because uh, I do think you have this, this deep, deep understanding because you have this umbrella view of so many so many people, but you also have this real life look at things. And so I think that um, everybody that's going to see this, I hope you take away uh, some nuggets. I hope you go back and take some notes. And um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, link all the information up above or down below on how to get in touch with LK. And um, I'm sure he'll be happy to, you know, talk to you depending upon, you know, what the, what the question is. But um, LK, thanks for spending the time, man. Really hey, do appreciate it. I really it. appreciate it, Robert. I'm, I'm an abundance guy. I think, you know, there's, Everybody can be successful. There's so yeah. much opportunity out there. The pie is amazing and it's growing. And yep. The world is an amazing, wonderful place. So yeah, I feel free to connect with me. That's awesome. Well, I, you know, I'd like to end every episode by telling you you're loved because I believe that at least once a day, people need to hear they're loved. I don't think we do that enough. So you're loved. Go out and make it a great day. Figure out how to be the CEO for your life. Listen to the lessons, grow. LK just dropped some huge bombs on us today. They're great. So um, we'll see you on the next episode. See ya. We're all a work in progress. There you go, bud. <laughs> Thanks, man. Take care.